let's see, here is the thing to use. Okay, my name is Persin again, then I'm working in the business unit networks in, in Ericsson and coordinating uh, our end-to-end -end solution for Volte. Uh, I'm actually going to start up with, with uh, uh, the summary of, of this presentation and saying that, I mean, Volte is kind of moving on the market and Volte video telephone is kind of happening now. Uh, it's a natural part of, of, of the communication evolution. I will talk about, more about that later on. Uh, video telephony as the voice part is launched in commercial operation in, in free operators network. Uh, more launches is coming in the next 12 months. Uh, uh, quality, we have discussed this earlier and it's pretty important that the quality levels are correct and, and it seems like the industry players uh, in this space are getting this right now. Uh, now, when it comes to the Korea market that are the ones that are having this, they are very, very, very ideal when it comes to the radio uh, situation. It's very densely planned network. Uh, so it's very good for video communication. This will not be the same situation when we go to the US and North American markets. And that will basically mean that uh, <clears throat> there will be a requirement of additional media functionality that perhaps IMTC and others in the industry could play a role, and that is video adaptation. It's a need for further standardization and interrupt testing in, in, in that area. So when it comes to the history then of, of uh, Volta and Volta video telephony, I mean, it kind of started back in 2003, 4 when we started to standardize what became the MMTEL specifications in 3DPP. Before that, actually in TISPAN for fixed access. Uh, it was a standard which allowed you to do multimedia communication with, with messaging and video and all of these kind of things. But at that point in time, there was really no drive in the industry to, to move from the circuit switched telephony uh, into some sort of multimedia communications from, from the operators. Perhaps there were issues with the IMS business model. Perhaps there were issues with, with uh, that the operators were broke due to the expensive 3D licenses back at that time. Now, when LT came into the, onto, onto the scene uh, in the 2007-8 timeframe, there became a discussion, what would be the telephony solution of LT? There were many competitors like the Volga consortium driven by Deutsche Telekom. Uh, but a group of companies, ourselves, Nokia and, and a few other Verizon, uh, went together and, and created the one voice specification, which was basically a subsetting of the MNTEL specification, just taking away all the multimedia stuff to do a plain GSM 2.0 service on top of LTE. And that gained some market traction. It was transformed into a GSMA PRD, IR92. At the same time, this group of companies took the decision that IMTC would be the, the group that would do the interoperability testing on an industry scale. So since then, I guess, now we are talking about the 2009-10 timeframe, we have been developing test specification in this organization. Uh, obviously, <laughs> Doing GSM 2.0 is not enough, so pretty early on they were drive to put together, to put uh, again, take in the multimedia components in, into the play. So IR94 was developed, which is the video part. Uh, you also have the IR9, IR39, which is high, high definition video conferencing specification, which uses uh, this Volta terminals as possible endpoint. Now, uh, the communication evolution for the operator kind of looks like this today. I mean, you have the USA, Japan, Korea track where they're starting in doing telephony over LT and, and adding additional functionality on that track going forward. And it goes pretty quickly. I mean, it's HD voice from the beginning, HD video from the beginning, CS coexistence is coming now. Uh, and inter service interconnect and roaming is, is for, for the next years to come. Uh, in Europe, they're going the RCS track with the best effort, voice and video. Uh, 
more challenging track, harder competitions from the web RTCs and, and, and uh, the social networks. Uh, but that's how it looks like. So for now, the market situation on Volte, I mean, it's about 6 million commercial uh, users as of September this year. Uh, South Korean Telecom has four and a half million of them. LGU plus one and a half million and KT is a few hundred thousand. Um, and obviously free network standing commercial uh, operation. One interesting part is this uh, LT advanced 100% LT. LGU plus now is, is moving on to taking away the dual radio VCC or dual radio CDMA LT play into their phones. They are now starting to ship phones that are GSM, WCDMA, and LTE capable into their network. So they're 100% relying on LTE access in their network since they were a CDMA operator uh, on the 2D, 3D side. So that is, is, is a landmark thing. And that also tells us that that interconnects between the operators in, in Korea is happening. Uh, there's major launches. Previous presenter talked about those uh, coming in the next 12 months. It will be the North American and Japanese markets. That will be quite interesting. Perhaps some early ones in Europe, we will see. Uh, video is part of a few of these launches, some, sometimes as, as the first step, sometimes as the second step. And when it comes to the terminals in Korea, they are already surpassing about 40 commercial devices that, that are supporting this. Volta and Volta video telephony. Mostly LG and Samsung, the Korean brands. Uh, in Korea, they're quite happy with, with, the, with the service. I mean, they have a great radio access network. They're running HD voice at AMR Wideband 2385, great quality. They are running video with 500 kilobits per second at H264, which I mean is obviously a much better experience than the old CS uh, video systems. Mm. This very cluttered map talks about uh, the network planning in Korea. This is a site uh, map over part of Seoul. And, and I mean, it's inter-site distance is about 150 meters uh, between the LTE base stations. And, and this gives you a massive throughput, and, and uh, basically you have KPIs on, on drop rate and, and these kind of things, which are, I mean, absolutely best in the world. So this is obviously the best place to start to do multimedia communication. Uh, this will not be the truth in North America. When we go to North America, we will see the reality that sites are very expensive, and uh, therefore, I mean, there will be much, much, much fewer sites. Perhaps the capacity per site will be great, but it will not solve the uplink issue. I mean, the reason why you want to have so many base stations is, is to be able to let the phones to connect in their uplink to, to a nearby station, uh, base station, and, and therefore have enough power to, to push enough bits for, for the service. So even if you can build a very big base station and have a big output power for the downlink, it will not solve, solve the uplink. And so we will end up with uplink issues for video services in, in the rest of the world. Now, when it comes to video services, and, and especially then real-time communication uh, and a video uh, telephony, I mean, it's characterized by, by a bunch of, of KPIs that we want to fulfill. One being uh, the latency. I mean, here I'm pointing out that you should have a less than 0.4 seconds mouth to ear or uh, camera to display delay. This is actually quite high delay, but this is the delay we're accustomed to in the 3D CS uh, video telephony solution. Uh, it would be better if we could do it in 0.2 seconds as for a voice call. Uh, <clears throat> when it comes to the video bitrate that we need for some sort of enjoyable quality, and then we come into the discussion on, on how to measure this. I mean, this is a MOS measurement uh, uh, subjective test uh, with some content and we, we typically use this to at least get a good feeling to, to what bitrate levels we should be at. 
Uh, in, in this case, we are aiming for, the big issue is what kind of MOS score should you aim for? Should it be 3, 4 or something else? We, we tend to aim for 3.5, whatever that means. Um, and, uh, but this tells us that the 500K for VGA resolution is, is what you really need uh, to be able to have a decently uh, well-perceived video service. Uh, in the Korea network, we, we have a service where we are out measuring quality for our customers, and uh, we're measuring all sorts of KPIs for, this is actually the bandwidth used in, in, in the networks uh, for, for two of the three operators. And it seems to be, I mean, they seems to have put out the requirement to be in the 500, 600 kilobits range uh, on their services, which fits well with, with our estimation where they should be. Uh, so, so that's good at least. Uh, but the issue is not really to push up the bit rates in the end device, in the terminal. So the issue is really to keep the delay and keep it, the packet loss rate to, to low numbers. And uh, when it comes to the assumption on, on what kind of packet loss rate do we tolerate, I mean, if you have a TV service, you typically say that if you have a visible degradation once every evening or once every hour or something like that, you start to... Uh, think about calling your service provider. I mean, that translates to 10 to the minus 6, 7, 8, 9 type of, of uh, error uh, ranges. Whereas for webcast, you may live with, with something every 15 minutes, perhaps. But for video telephony, we're kind of aiming to have a visible error in, in the region of every 20 seconds, which is, I mean, quite a lot, but... but uh, that still is, is that you need to have 999 out of 1,000 packets through the system within the delay bound. So it's a still a challenging requirement with, with real time. Uh, can you do it then? Well, again, we went out measuring in, in the operator's network, and here we basically have the first table is low load, high signal-to-noise ratio, good radio conditions. I mean, looks good. I mean, the average uh, packet loss is very, very low on LT. Uh, the 99 percentile, there's always some users that will have pretty bad quality, of course. They are in coverage situation there. Uh, if you increase the load, still we are in, in very good uh, situations, but that comes down to the quality of service paradigm that we have in, in Volt. I mean, we are securing the quality of service. Therefore, we are managing to to keep the packet loss rate low even if we increase the load. But if we start to have bad signal-to-noise rates or coverage issues, then, I mean, we're looking at 10, 16% of packet loss rate in average. Obviously, your video communication will look like shit. So handling coverage situation is, is really uh, an issue. So the challenge we should work further on is really this. I mean, you, in some countries like the U.S., you plan your network for voice services, basically. So you have the cell sites with a certain distance in between. <coughs> uh, now, a voice service is 10, 15, 20 kilobits or so, whereas the video service is 500K. So the cell area which you can run 500K is much, much smaller than 20K. So... You could, might as well have cells, planned cells looking like this. You have a blue area where you can support the, the video service with the quality you want to have, but you have a yellow area of X dBs, uh, which is, I mean, what should you do there? And what happened is this yellow area is really this. Uh, this is a simulation on, on, on the coverage issue. I mean, basically, the, you can't send the packets with the pace your, your link bitrate is lower than, than the, the bitrate of the, of, of the video. So you build up delay and you start to drop packets. And uh, I mean, it's video bitrate adaptation. It's that simple. You, you could do it with a terminal play, like on the right-hand side here. You have a UI that measures that see that the delay seems to increase very much now in, in my system. I take down the, the bitrate. Obviously, I will have a less of a, of, of a big peak, 
the, the issue. I will react when I have an issue, but the time the issue will persist will be shorter than if I do nothing. You can have a network triggered adaptation where you basically look at the signal to noise rates over the terminals and, and from the network side send out the trigger. Uh, and and uh, hopefully you can do that before the delay starts to build up. You could be trigger happy and adapt all the time. Um, and, uh, and by that basically hopefully remove the issues on, on, on the delay and packet loss side. Uh, <clears throat> when it comes to, to adaptation and, and, and what's in the standards, I mean, there is nothing much uh, in, in standards. The protocols needed for it are, are, are on, in place. I mean, there is some, so, something called sender-based adaptation in, in real-time communication, which is typically based on feedback that the receiver sends to the sender. And uh, the only uh, feedback that you ha have is RTCP packet. So you basically look at the sender and receiver report. And from that, you figure out if, if you start to have packet losses in the system or delay starts to increase or whatever, you can read out of them and you react on the sender side. This is obviously fully supported in standards since we support RTCP SRR, but we don't have any guidelines on how to do it, what's the reaction time and what is the trigger point, etc. There's receiver-based adaptation, which is supported in GSMA a IR94 to some extent. It supports this RTCP timber message. What it's all about is that the encoder are sending uh, RTP video frames to the receiver, and the receiver are measuring on the packets as they are received. And you, you obviously know what kind of inter-packet delay there should be, and, and what packet you should receive, and if you see if, if you have packet losses or delay starting to build up or jitter or something, you could trigger the sender to, to reduce its bit rate by sending this RTCP timber message, temporary media bit rate, or the maximum bit rate. Uh, also supported in, in 3GPP, supported in IR94 that the terminal should be able to read and react on, on, on the timber messages. But this is something that also needs to have more attention in, in, in the industry. When it comes to the network trigger adaptation, you have the ECN trigger. It's basically the base station that measures the signal to noise ratio or whatever. Uh, when it sees that congestion is starting to build up, it sends RTP with the ECN uh, back to the receiver. And the receiver then sends an RTCP timber. Supported in 3GPP, not supported at all in, in GSMA, and they need further work on. So, <clears throat> interoperability is not fully secured. Uh, GSMA IR94 does not mandate video adaptation. Perhaps it should. 3GPP do specify the protocols, but not any procedure, procedures or guidelines. So video adaptation is needing basically bilateral work between the terminal manufacturers and the network vendors and, and uh, that's done. Perhaps something for IMTC to consider working on. So with this, I'm back at the conclusion then on which I started with. Uh, that Walter video telephone is kind of happening now and we're seeing the first deployments. <coughs> Perhaps we should do more work on adaptation uh, to secure the success of it going forward also. So thank you.